Welcome to Map Crow, the RPG art show. My name is Kyle, and today we're talking about how to use Foundry Virtual Tabletop to run isometric maps. This video is brought to you by the fine folks who have subscribed to my Patreon over at patreon.com slash mapcrow. Where just $5 a month gets you a pack of digital terrain, map components, and minis every month. And in fact, I'm going to show you how to use these map components and minis here on Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I love this program. I've been hearing about it for years, but it always seemed a little too complicated to me. Like, it's kind of this front-end app that you pay $50 to get access to for a license, and then the rest of its functionality is filled out by mods that you download and install. This sounds very technical, uh, but it turns out even a knucklehead like me can make it work. The mod that supports isometric maps needs you to run a previous version of Foundry. Once you have purchased a license on your profile page, go to the Purchase License page and use the drop-down menu for Download Version. And you will want the 0.7.9 as of the date of this video. All of this stuff is being worked on all the time by this tremendous community, so this may not always be up to date. Once you have the correct version downloaded, you need to go to the add-on modules and download two specifically that make all this wondrous stuff possible. You'll need Grape Juice Isometrics, and you will need an older version of Lib Wrapper, and I will show you how to download the correct versions of these mods. You'll hit the Install Mod button, and then go back to your web browser and open up the Module Project page on the Foundry website for Grape Juice Isometrics. For some reason, it just doesn't seem to show up in the search window in Foundry itself. You'll right-click on the manifest URL for the latest version and copy that link address. And you'll just paste that into the manifest URL at the bottom of the uh, install module window back in the Foundry app. Then you just click install. Now the next module that you'll need is LibWrapper, which is uh, another app that makes uh, grape juice isometric work. Now you'll need an older version of LibWrapper as of this video. You'll need the second to last uh, version of it. So you'll just, you know, right click the manifest URL and paste that and, and download it just fine. Um, yeah, right now there seems to be some kind of conflict with the latest version of that. And this is kind of, you know, the hairy part of using Foundry. But I have to say, when I had some questions, I just logged into Grape Juice's Discord and the programmer themselves walked me through it and we figured it out in just like a couple minutes it was really easy now the last thing you'll need is a game system so i'm using the simple world building system uh, but you can download you know 5e or pathfinder or any of the major systems out there in order to run them on um, on foundry once you have your mods and your game system all ready to go it's time to go to the game world and create our first world name it whatever you want uh, make sure you name the path and uh, choose the game system that you are going to be using in it. Click create world, then click launch world, and then uh, just select player, game master, and join the server. There's lots of things that you can do with servers for Foundry, and I'm not going into any of it because we're just going to focus on building isometric maps today. You'll want to create a new scene. I'm going to just recreate mission one of Rangers of Shadow Deep really quickly here, so that's what I am naming it. Next, you'll have to go to Settings and uh, manage your modules and make sure you have everything that you want turned on. It's automatically going to turn on Lib Wrapper once you turn on Grape Juice Isometrics. And I'm going to choose a couple of other ones um, that I am interested in using later. Now, right click on the scene at the top of the screen and hit Configure and uh, click the checkboxes for Enable Isometric Mode, the Fix to Offset, 
and then click on background image. Now it's going to lead you to your directory. I have all of my assets uh, all in one place and I'm going to choose my 36 by 36 more lands to use as my background image. Hit save changes and then just click uh, yes uh, at the warning window and you can see that we have the isometric mode enabled and our background image is uh, placed down on the map and it fits on the grid perfectly. I have sized the isometric map elements and this background image so they work automatically if your grid size is set to 100. Using the tile placement tool and uh, selecting the file folder, you can drag in uh, whatever kind of files are in your directory and start building your map. Because we have this nice big background image that is uh, large enough to play our game on, uh, we can just kind of focus on putting the pretty things on and we don't have to go to all the bother of uh, creating this giant grid. We can just put the interesting tiles over the background image and they fit together really seamlessly because <laughs> they were designed to. Once you have laid down uh, all the stuff that's kind of closest to the ground, I would recommend dragging in the rest of your scenery from back to front because that's naturally how it's going to be ordered in the layers. You can mess around with the layers to fine tune things after the fact, uh, but it, it it's a lot easier if you just kind of lay things out in the proper order to begin with. It's a really good idea to use that little crosshair symbol underneath the square for the selection tool. This will give you pixel perfect selection mode and make things much more easy to select and move around freely. Now that we have our map, it's time to start bringing in some of our miniatures. Now, uh, anything that isn't a map feature that might move around is called an actor in Foundry. So I'm going to create a new actor to be my ranger of Shadow Deep. Now I'll just double click the image to choose the miniature that I want to use for this character. I'm going to click on the vase face PNG and select file. Now I'll just drag in the actor from the toolbar on the right and it's just a wee little ranger. <laughs> Hold me closer, tiny ranger. I'll, I'll scoot the ranger on over to the door so we have a good sense of scale. Double click on the ranger model and uh, go to token, then hit image and change the scale to 1.7. Now we need to center the mini in the grid square. And uh, so click on token again, uh, go back to image and hit position and click drag your token to where you want them to be. Uh, once you hit update token, we're all set. For the token that's on the map, that is. We need to update the actor with the token settings that we have set just now on the map. It's a little confusing, but it, it'll make sense after you do it a couple of times. Click on the token on the map and then double click on the actor. Hit the prototype token button and then hit assign token. And that will take all everything that is on that token that's on the map and assign it to the prototype token so every time you click drag it from the actors bar it will show up properly do this with all the models you plan on using go back to the scene configuration set the grid scale to one inch per square and you're basically all set all you need to do then is just roll dice and, you know, play your game of Rangers of Shadow Deep or whatever you want to play. There's a lot of functionality to Foundry VTT that I haven't even gotten into, uh, but it's a very powerful virtual tabletop uh, and it's being supported with new features and growing all the time. A lot of the graphics and camera and functionality seem to work a little bit smoother for me than Roll20. Uh, this is probably because I, I, I do have a pretty awful internet connection in the room I'm in. After overcoming the hurdles to actually getting everything installed and uh, troubleshooting some of these patching issues, I have to say, I, I get the hype now. It really makes a lot of sense why there are so many passionate fans and users of Foundry, and I can't wait to play my second scenario of Rangers of Shadow Deep with it. Not to mention Frostgrave or Five Parsecs from Home. I, I, I bought both of those hardbacks. I might have a, a, a slight obsession with this whole like solo narrative wargaming thing right now. <laughs> 
And I think that is it for this episode. Thank you again for watching, and thank you for all the wonderful comments on the Patreon launch, and also all the kind comments on the last video about my actual play of Rangers of Shadow Deep using Roll20. That was a lot of fun to do, and it seems pretty clear that you guys want more of that, so more is on the way. I've been working on a lot of drawing behind the scenes that I'll probably be sharing with you soon, and uh, I think I need to make some kind of like physical media because it's been very digital loaded uh, so far this year. So um, that's it for me this time. Thanks again for watching. Uh, check out my Patreon page. The links to everything I've talked about are in the description below. And until next time, my friends, farewell.